Well, that you see behind me is the famous Dead Sea. Now the Dead Sea is the lowest elevation in the world. We're actually 430 meters below sea level. The sea itself, it goes as deep as about 320 meters or so. So um, that's almost about uh, a kilometer below sea level. Now this is a um, quite a unique place. Um, right across behind me is the West Bank and I am on the shores of Jordan. It's 10 times more salty than a regular ocean or a sea is. And uh, just so there's no confusion, this is not actually a sea. This is indeed, in fact, a lake. The floating sensation. You can only really get it here in the Dead Sea. Well, I can confirm that you can definitely float in the Dead Sea. Now we're right outside the, um, the hotel, about to um, set off for uh, Petra. And um, now we're going to take these rides uh, on a grueling journey on the uh, ancient sites of um, Jordan. And now we're in Wadi Arabah, as it's called. It's a huge wadi, as far as the, um, the eye can see. The roads can be quite perilous. They haven't been so far, but soon we're going to be taking um, the road up those um, the mountains in the very, very a uh, far distance over there and um, but for the time being Infinity has set up this um, little oasis where we have cold drinks and coffee and um, and uh, and all our QX 80s actually right in the back and the one that I'm driving the QX 80 limited uh, it's brand new I think it had about seven kilometers on the clock when I uh, when I got in it it's just as comfortable driving it on uh, on, on the uh, highways of of uh, Dubai as it is in these, um, should we call the Jordanian outback. Now here we are in our uh, next stop in the ancient city of Petra, um, known to its inhabitants in the ancient days as Rakhmu. It's an historical and archaeological site and that's precisely why we're here. Um, they say People settled here in 9000 BC, so extremely ancient. You get the feeling that these uh, Nabataeans lived rather for the afterlife than anything else. They call it the facade, but they're all burial sites here. The royal, they would be buried in these um, larger, more magnificent graves, so to speak. Tombs, let's say. The Nabataeans also had a theater that looked very much like Greek and Roman theaters, as a matter of fact. Well, the Nabataeans, by, uh, by nature, they were carvers. Among being traders, they were carvers, and that's one of the main reasons they chose this place, because of the, the kind of rock there is in Indiana Jones and the um, Last Crusader. They actually um, go in here and look for um, some treasures, I believe, but actually this isn't a treasury as it is known. It is actually a tomb of one of the uh, Nabutian kings. I think in the last 20 years or so, they discovered more tombs down here after they dug it. So it is widely accepted that this is indeed a tomb and not a treasury. Now, this ancient city is one of the most barren places on earth. It's in the middle of a desert. It's um, extremely dry. There's hardly any vegetation around, and the Nabataeans had to figure out a way of uh, getting water here. And they had two very clever ideas indeed. Number one was this water canal here. You can kind of see it. It brought down collected rainwater, which would be um, used for washing and uh, household chores and what have you and then on the um, so that would be on my left let's say what I just showed you and on my right they had the one for drinking water and that was actually provided by ceramic piping and you can actually see some of the ceramic piping that's still left here I'm gonna kind of bend here and, and show you this is part of it and there so um, that is the way, that is how they sorted out um, to get water here. So 
So I'm actually in the tomb now, and um, yes, it is a, um, a cave, as I suspected. They would bury it there, and then they would close it down, uh, you know, close it up to protect it from the tomb raiders. But then uh, this area here, there's a huge area here. This would be the dining room for the um, for the people um, close to the uh, to the buried. So they would come here in and eat wine and dine. Well, I don't know. About, let's just say they would dine um, in celebration of the uh, ones who'd passed. Now you might be able to see in the distance that kind of right behind me there and then all the way to the corner over there they are full of huge humongous royal tombs the afterlife you're there for eternity whereas in life expectancy in the Nabataean days probably didn't get uh, many years past 65 to be honest now it's very rare that a structure of this sort should survive for 2,000 plus years because you know the Greeks and the Romans have something very very similar but um, all their structures have been ruined because they were freestanding structures whereas in the Nabataeans they carved this into the um, to the side of a, a hill a mountain so it's uh, a lot more sturdy and it hasn't disappeared Good morning. 